Hi and welcome to the Business Finance Bulletin, episode 102. Again to this week's Business Finance Bulletin, episode 102, with me, Rob Warlow from Business Loan Services. Well, as I record this, this is the last bulletin of 2015. So I thought for this week, um, we'd sit back and reflect on what's gone on in the small business finance world in 2015. So we're going to be looking at what banks have been up to, the alternative lending market, business confidence, barriers to growth and issues that businesses um, have faced generally over the last 12 months. So a quick overview ahead of what's been going on in 2015 start this week's bulletin on a high, a positive note. Now, one theme um, that I've been sharing with you amongst the bulletins in 2015 is about business confidence. And I've been sharing survey after survey after survey, which has shown that small business owners were feeling very confident, um, particularly during the early part of 2015. Business owners are planning ahead. They're saying they're going to be looking at hiring more staff, going to be investing more into plant and machinery, investing more into working capital. Why? Because they were seeing increasing order books and confidence amongst consumers generally. Um, but um, over the last month or so, towards the end of 2015, um, as explained by in the last bulletin, we're beginning to see a little edge taken away from confidence levels. So as we go into 2016, I wouldn't say that small business owners are as confident as we were at the start of the year. And this is something certainly that we've seen here at Business Loan Services in the clients that we speak to. Everyone's just a little bit it's a little bit unsure of where we are as we go into the new year. Particularly as I record this, um, this week um, the US announced its first rate interest rate rise for a very long time. And so that's going to set the benchmark for what 2016 is going to look like. When will that happen in the UK? Well, that one is out for debate, but clearly it is going to happen um, sometime. So what's going to happen here is, of course, that many business owners have been used to a low interest rate environment. And we are now going to see costs of borrowing beginning to edge up. So if you're planning ahead for 2016, just make sure that your forecasts include increased on interest costs that you're likely to face. But overall, a much more positive end of the year than where we were at 2014. So a really good start for 2016 beckons. Let's move on now to the sources of finance that we were seeing in 2015. Now, as we know, with confidence levels improving, confidence levels brings growth and growth typically needs finance. So what did we see during 2015 as regards sources of finance? First of all, the high street banks. Um, certainly here at BLS, we've seen an increased appetite amongst banks to support growing businesses. So I would say that 2015 was the first year that we saw real evidence of the banks starting to be uh, really willing to look at plans and support growing businesses. Of course, you still have to have all your numbers bang up to date, you know, be profitable, have a credible plan, all the forecasts in place, but certainly more appetite to do business. How did this translate into numbers? Um, well, the Bank of England, and um, every month comes out with a total amount of lending currently outstanding from banks to small businesses. So I took a quick look to see where we were in December 14. Now, as of December 14, there was £167.1 billion outstanding in support to small businesses. Now, compared to the previous 12 months, that was actually a decline of 2.1%. So bank lending had shrunk by just over 2% in that uh, 12 months. Um, as we record this today, the only latest figures I've got um, are as at the end of October 2015. And that shows that the current amount of money outstanding to businesses is 164 billion. So on the face of it, about a three billion pound drop. But from October 2015 compared to October 2014, there's actually been an increase of 0.7% in the amount of money currently outstanding to businesses. So it does marry up that banks are beginning to come back into the marketplace. But of course, what about the alternative lenders? Um, or the big thing that we feature in all the bulletins because it is becoming an increasingly um, popular place now for business owners to, uh, to get finance. I mean, many of the seminars um, that we run, I often ask questions of business owners, how many of them heard of crowdfunding? Now, if I'd asked the questions three years previously, I would have had a sea of blank faces. But increasingly, with each seminar we do, more and more hands are going up about business owners who have not only heard of crowdfunding, but also accessed it as well. So we're seeing new highs being reached by the likes of Funding Circle, um, Funding Night, 
Crowd Cube, um, Syndicate Room, Rate Setter, Zopa, all of these are really now starting to get well into the consciousness of small business owners. So as we enter in 2016, um, just make sure you explore all of these avenues. And the one thing that is coming out very clearly is that the high street banks are now seeing the value of these alternative finance providers. And in many cases, partnerships are being formed. And the early part of 2015, we saw an announcement by RBS that they were now going to be referring business that they couldn't do onto Funding Circle and Assets Capital. And that followed um, the, uh, uh, an action previously in the year before by Santander, who have already formed a partnership with Funding Circle. So we're seeing all of these collaborations going on. And in fact, here at BLS, we get steady referrals now from banks as well where managers get to know what we do and they're passing introductions. We can't help, Rob, can you and the team help? So beginning to see an increased awareness amongst banks that you know, spreading the risk by getting other lenders in on share that risk is not a bad move. So that's all good news as we go into 2016. It's all about spreading your risk and making sure that you look at every different avenue of funding available to you. Innovation in the small business finance space. What's been going on there? Now, typically, you wouldn't think of putting a word of innovation and small business finance together. Um, <laughs> views it as a particularly boring world. But no, 2015 saw the rise in an alternative to the alternative lending market. We're beginning to see businesses that do a lot of business with other small businesses collaborating together and sharing finance resources. So, for example, um, earlier this year, I shared news about Ali. Baba, um, the online retail site, they're now starting to provide um, support to small businesses who sell through their website. Uh, Alibaba have, have teamed up with EasyBob and iWalker, who are short-term loan providers, to provide um, a platform for their small businesses to get hold of short-term loans, which obviously helps boost the amount of business being done through the platform. We also saw the launch from Amazon of business loans. So if you've got um, a store on Amazon, and Amazon have now got a lot of visibility on the number of transactions you're doing, you can now get a business loan from Amazon in order to stock your store again bypassing the banks. We've also seen credit card providers. I and mean, in the last bulletin I mentioned about WorldPay, um, who are now uh, being able to provide um, upfront cash payments depending on the level of transactions that you do through them. And it's similar with PayPal as well. They are now being able to offer business loans to businesses where they've got visibility and the amount of uh, transactions going through their platform. So we're beginning to see a whole host of other providers now bypassing high street banks and also the alternative finance scene generally, cutting them out, cutting the middleman out and going straight to business owners and say, hey, we can see the transactions you're doing. Would you like us to provide you with some finance? And I'm sure as we go into 2016, we're going to see a lot more examples of those type of collaborations and tie ups. Really interesting. So watch out for that. And now a word that normally strikes terror in the heart of business owners legislation. Well, June 2015, we did see some legislation coming through, um, which is actually going to be a positive step for business owners. Now, the first problem that we've always seen during 2015, and even going back a few years as well, is late payment. I'm constantly mentioning this because, as we know, it's a scourge of growth. Um, you've got all this money out, you can't get the money in quick enough, and as a result, your growth um, just trips up. Um, the government has consistently recognised this as a barrier to growth. And so during the year, they've done a couple of things. First of all, they revised the prompt payment code. So these are as a voluntary code that many businesses sign up to. And the government has now started naming and shaming those businesses which don't abide by the code and are habitual late payers. Um, they've also now started to put some legislation that's come in through the Small Business Enterprise Act. Um, there's now going to be a conciliation service, which hopefully should be launched very soon, um, whereby with business owners who've got a dispute with a larger business who are not paying them, they can go to an independent body. So hopefully that will bring a lot more clarity and focus to this issue of late payment. Um, that Small Business Enterprise Act has also brought in um, a new code for banks where they're going to have to share a lot more information with the alternative lending platforms. But more importantly, and this is yet to be operationalized, but should be during the first quarter of 2016, that Small Business Enterprise Act will require 
banks where they've said no to pass on the contact details of businesses if they agree to third party platforms or brokers who will then be able to go and have a look into the wider market. So in other words, um, a business owner does not leave a bank with a no ringing in their ears, but they'll have more support from the bank, whereby the bank will say, do you know what, we can't help you. However, if you're agreeable, can we pass your details on to one of our partners and they'll be able to see what you do. As I mentioned earlier, we're already seeing that sort of collaborative approach with introductions that we get. So it's really starting to get in the psyche of banks. So some good legislative support there to help you grow your business in 2016. There you are, quick roundup of what happened in 2015. So as we stand here on the cusp of 2016, what can we expect? Well, I mentioned earlier, interest rate rises are clearly going to be on the horizon. So if you're planning to borrow in 2016, make sure you factor in higher interest rate costs when you're calculating affordability. Um, skill gaps, that's something that's continually coming out as well as a barrier to growth. So you really got to make sure that you've got your eyes and ears open for the right people who are the right fit for your business and investing in training and support for your existing employees to make sure that they can support your growth plans. Um, so 2016, uh, Certainly for BLS, it's going to be another exciting year. We're already seeing um, some forward plans from businesses who are looking to borrow money. As ever, if you do have a business project that you want to chat through as regards funding options, remember, just get in touch with us, info at businessloanservices.co.uk, and we're more than happy to have a general chat. So that's it, the last episode for 2015. Thank you very much for being with me over the year, and we look forward to being with you again in 2016, where we'll be bringing you all of the up-to-date news and ideas of what's going on in the small business finance market. Thanks very much indeed. Have a great, successful, and profitable start to 2016. See you next year. Bye-bye now.